been getting a lot of questions about tuna. Apparently, people are coming home with lots of tuna. For example, Craig Baja43 emailed me and told me that he ended up with a thick piece of bluefin belly from a 330 pound bluefin. And April and Matt Hill contacted me saying, what do we do with all this skipjack? And then another buddy of mine, Dave Thiessen, came home from a 16-day trip and gave me a bunch of tuna, including some yellowfin belly. So I've been thinking, you know, I haven't fired up my smoker in a while. I think it's time to smoke some tuna belly. My name is Yanni, this is Fisherman's Belly, and of all the things that you can smoke in California, I think tuna belly has got to be the tastiest. <laughs> Alright gang, so I'm going to be starting this. It's 10 o'clock at night right now and this is a perfect time to do this because once I create this wet brine and then I immerse my uh, tuna bellies in the wet brine, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and let it marinate overnight or let it brine overnight and then tomorrow morning I'll fire up the smoker and we'll be there. But anyway, so now is a perfect time to do this right before bedtime. Um, I've got a gallon of water. I'm going to add to that water one cup of brown sugar. Oh boy. One cup of brown sugar. One cup of white granulated sugar. There's two kinds of brines you can make. I've got a video on how to smoke bonita. It's right up over here. And in that video, I use a dry brine. I used salt and sugar with no liquid. So. That's a dry brine. Today I'm making a wet brine. I'm a wet brine. I'm using water as a base, and I'm adding my salt and my sugar into the water. So what's the difference? Ah, eh, you know, for me, whenever I do a wet brine, I like uh, adding a lot of different flavors and a lot of different flavor profiles into my wet brine. And when I do a dry brine, I strictly go with salt or maybe salt and sugar, and that's it. So it's just a matter of taste for me. Some people claim that when you're smoking at a higher temperature, a dry brine actually does a better job. And when you're smoking at cold temperatures below 200, they prefer wet brines. I say try it all on your own and just figure it out for yourself. Okay, so we got one cup of uh, white sugar, one cup of brown sugar, two cups of soy sauce. Okay. And my last ingredient, if you guys know me, you know I love hot sauce. I'm going to put a third of a cup of hot sauce. You know, and what's going to happen is this hot sauce is going to play off of all that sugar that we've got in here. And it's just going to be a delight, believe me. And during the cooking process, the hot sauce is going to mellow out. And I've told you that before. Just trust me, it does. It's time to stir. Now normally, if you aren't using frozen fillets like I am, and you put your fish fillets in here, even if you're putting it in the refrigerator, you need to put some ice cubes in there. Because the temperature of the, the room temperature fish fillet and the room temperature water going in the refrigerator, you know, you might be setting up a situation where bacteria might grow. So you really want to keep this as cold as possible. I'm foregoing the ice cubes. That's why I'm using my fillets frozen, so I don't have to worry about it. So it's time to uh, put the fillets in. So I've got my soy sauce, my brown sugar, my white sugar, I've got my hot sauce, and my one gallon of water. And the fillets, I'm going to trim them up tomorrow morning after they thaw out. And, and of course, brine overnight. There's one fillet. And here's my second fillet. And here's the last thing I want to do. I want to take this plate that's just going to fit inside this pot here. This is a big old stock pot, by the way. And what this is going to do, I'm sticking it right on top. This is going to make sure that my fillets stay immersed, that I don't have a fillet popping up and drying out. All right, so this is ready for the refrigerator. So there you have it, gang. I've just put those tuna bellies in the refrigerator. They'll be there for eight to 10 hours. I normally don't sleep more than six or seven hours anyway. And then uh, we'll take them out, we'll let them dry off and develop that pellico skin. I'll fire up the smoker and we are one step closer to putting some smoked tuna belly in our own belly. We'll see you tomorrow morning. 
It's 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm just wrapping up my cup of coffee with my Fisherman's Belly logo on it. I love it. Anyway, take a look at what we've got here. Oh my god. Oh, the first thing I gotta get out of here is this plate. Oh boy. Wow. Alright, let's take a look. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look at that. Oh boy. Okay, I gotta rinse it. Get all this brine off of it. So it's been brining for eh, close to 10 hours, probably nine and a half, ten hours. I'm gonna trim it since I've got it right here. Take my thin boning knife so I can trim off exactly how much I need. Oh, this comes out pretty easy. Look at that. Oh, there's my cat. Meow. Meow. <laughs> Take a look at the cat. What's the matter? It's fish time, huh? All right, that's that. That's clean there. Now I want to pat it dry. And then I'm gonna get put it on the rack. Okay, so now I'm putting it on this rack where it's gonna develop pelico skin. I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. Okay, and here's the second piece. Okay, time to turn on the fan. So I've got my fish sitting on a rack, all right? I'm gonna turn on my fan. So here's what's going on. We are accelerating the drying process. This will take an hour or two at the most. But what we're really doing is developing a pellicle skin. A pellicle skin coats the outside of this brined fish. And it's a, a, a protein that forms the skin all the way around. And what this really does is it absorbs the smoke flavor a hundred times better than if it didn't have the pellicle skin. And, you know, since we're smoking, isn't that what we're trying to do? Develop some nice smoke flavor to complement what's going on with the fish. So this is a very critical process. I'm, I'm accelerating this by using a fan and by using uh, a grill and allowing the air to go up on, underneath. So I'll be touching this every once in a while. And about halfway through this process, about an hour, if I determine I'm getting close, I'll fire up the smoker. So, hold on. Here we go. Okay, it looks like the pelico skin is developed really nice. It's nice and dry. Wow, it's perfect. Look at that. Okay, everything is ready for the smoker. Finally, you guys, the moment of truth. I got these tuna bellies here. I've got my smoke coming out. I'm sitting at about 240 because I know when I open up my door, my temperature's gonna drop, but I'll keep an eye on all that. I wanna cook, I wanna smoke these tuna bellies at about 220 to 230 degrees for two hours. So I'm going to be monitoring it and drinking maybe a beer. And maybe it's a little too early for a beer. But anyway, listen, I'm using hickory wood chips. I just love the smell of hickory. It just brings me back to when I was a kid because my parents, my grandparents all did a lot of smoking and it just brings me back. But anyway, it's time to stick these things in. Oh my God. Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh boy. And here I go, I'm sitting at 223. This is exactly where I need to be. So, we'll stay at this temperature range for a couple hours and we should do it. All right, gang, I'll see you guys. Well, in, in one hour, I'm gonna check. And what I'm gonna be checking for is internal temperature. That is actually the most critical thing. <clears throat> okay, it's been an hour. So I'm here to open up the smoker door and stick a probe into the tuna, into the thickest part, and get an internal reading. Here we go. Here is our tuna belly. So let me pick a nice thick part right in here. And we'll see where we're at. I'm sitting at 133. Wow, that's actually very good after one hour. So far, so good, gang. After one hour, we're sitting at 133. This is perfect, perfect. I think probably a half hour to uh, an hour will be up between 
we'll be closer to 140. Maybe in a half hour, we'll see. Look at that. Look at that beautiful color. Let's take a temperature reading. 143, wow. And I'm sure it's gonna continue to cook and go up a few degrees, and that's okay. Oh. I'm gonna bring these inside and let them cool off and then dream about the different ways that we can eat this. By the way, if you have any questions about today's video, just ask them down below and I'll get back with you just as soon as I can. I'm so excited to add this to one of the uh, many smoked recipes that I have. I've got a yellowtail smoked recipe, that's right up there. Of course, I talked about my bonita. I also have a trout smoked recipe, that's right up there as well. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Yanni, this is Fisherman's Belly. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe and click that bell icon so you don't miss any of my new recipes. And we'll see you on the next one, and the next one will be a smoked tuna belly dip. Stay tuned.